But you know, I thought of all these stories I could tell you. I thought of reading you some books, and then it occurred to me there's a really good story that many people think they know, but they've never actually heard the whole story from beginning to end with all the good parts. The story of Jonah. Once upon a time, there was a man named Jonah, and the voice of the Lord came to Jonah and said, Jonah. I bet you thought God was going to say, Jonah. That's in the movies. This is for real. The voice of the Lord came to Jonah and said, Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim my word to them. And Jonah said, oh, no. I don't like that idea. Nineveh is a big, huge city, and it's Sin City. It's like New York with an attitude, which it already has. And God said, I know. So Jonah said, all right, I'm on my way. And he very carefully backed out the door and went the other way, away from the bus station, and went down to the shore and looked for a good-looking ship that was headed west instead of east and got on it and sailed away, thinking, I will just go to a different place. Well, out there on the ocean, Jonah was thinking, that was a close one. And a storm came up, a terrible storm that was washing the ship left and right and up and down. And these sailors, who were pretty good sailors, were all going, eh, ooh, this is not good. I don't like this. And everybody started looking at each other and saying, this doesn't happen by accident. Somebody's God is mad at him. And they all looked at each other and said, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Not me. I didn't do anything. Not me. And Jonah finally came forward and he said, ah, guys, it was me. Sorry. I was the one. And they said, what? And he said, well, you see, God is kind of mad at me, and I'm trying to hide from God, and I think maybe God is sort of making a point or something. So it's my fault, not yours. And they said, well, this is a problem for us, because what we were doing is throwing everything overboard as an offering for our God. Um, what should we throw overboard for your God? And Jonah said, ah, um, uh, 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 me. And they said, we can't do that. That's stupid. That's immoral. That's terrible. And Jonah said, well, yeah, but you know, that's what we got to do. So they all said, okay, we'll do this. And they picked him up and they threw him overboard. And they thought, oh, that was really a bad thing to do to that guy. And the minute they threw him overboard, the waves settled down, and the wind died away, and everything looked great, and Jonah was out there treading in the water. And suddenly, he was swallowed by a giant fish. And the sailor said, whoo, sometimes you want to see the one that got away. And they sailed off. Jonah, meanwhile, is in the belly of the fish, and the fish swims down to the bottom of the sea and sits there. And Jonah sits there inside the belly of the fish saying, Wow, you know, it really stinks in here. <laughs> Smells like fish. I can't see. I can't breathe. This is not good. And the fish just sits there for three days and three nights the fish just sits there and Jonah sits in the belly of the fish thinking you know I guess maybe it was kinda silly to think I could run away from God but now what do I do and then it occurred to him well if God can chase me all of the way across the ocean and get me inside of this fish then maybe God is still around somewhere. So maybe I ought to talk to God. So Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish, sitting there in the dark and the stink. Jonah prayed, and he prayed, Oh, God, you know, when it comes right down to it, you're God, and I'm not really very much God at all. Sorry. 
and sometimes it seems like the whole ocean is just piled up on top of me and I am at the bottom of everything and all the seaweed in the world is just wrapped around me and I'm gonna die. But at least I'll die being your friend, okay? Sorry. And Jonah waited. And then there was a rumble in the fish. The fish's stomach started grumbling and rumbling and the fish started moving up through the ocean, up and up to the surface and up at the surface, came up by the shore and boop, barfed Jonah out onto the beach. And Jonah said, wow, that's really gross. And he waited for some seagulls to come kind of lick him off and clean him up a little bit, took a little bath in the water and then he said, okay, now, at least I've escaped from God. I can go on my travels. And he turned around. Whoa! And what did he see in front of him? But Nineveh, which is a great huge city, nowhere near the ocean. And he thought to himself, okay, what is this deal all about? What's with this whole Nineveh thing? And the voice of the Lord came to him again and said, Jonah, I want you still to go talk to Nineveh and give them my word. Tell them to repent. And Jonah said, what? Tell the Ninevites to repent? They don't even know how to behave, let alone repent. This is not going to go good for me. And God said, I know. Just go do it. So Jonah made himself go all the way to Nineveh. And Nineveh is a huge city. It takes three days to walk across it. So we walked across it for one day. And then he set up his little soapbox on the street corner and he climbed up on his soapbox and he said, ha, <clears throat> uh, people of Nineveh, I got this word for you from God who says you need to repent or else all heck is going to break loose and it's going to be awful so you should repent. This is really dumb. So everybody listen to me, okay? And everybody listened to him. People on the street stopped and they listened and said, you know, he's right. We really ought to repent. And they went and they started talking to each other and word got around. It even got to the king. And the king said, hmm, actually, that's a good idea. We need to repent. And the king declared a national day of repenting. And everybody repented and they wore sackcloth and ashes. And they all dumped ashes on their heads, which is a way of saying, oh, we really messed up and we're sorry. And everybody was fasting and praying. And meanwhile, Jonah was standing on his soapbox saying, yeah, because you see, the Lord is going to come and smite you all and kill you, right? God, right? And then he noticed that they were all repenting. And he waited, and there was no smiting. There were no thunderbolts. There were no balls of fire from heaven. There were no plagues. And he said, ah, God, what is this? I thought you were going to destroy these people. And God said, no, I wanted them to repent or else they would be destroyed, but they repented, so they won't be destroyed. Oh, that's got to stink. Now look at me, I look like a stupid fool. And Jonah had himself a little snit. And he went off on a hill under a palm tree and he just sat there and he said, no, God's going to destroy these people. Right, God? And God said, why would I want to destroy these people? This wonderful city full of people who are so innocent, they don't know their right hand from their left. Oh, and also many cattle. Well, Jonah said, that's stupid. That's dumb. What are you making me look like a jerk for? Because I told everybody God was going to destroy them, and now God is not going to destroy them, and so I look like I'm stupid. I don't like that. So God played a little trick on Jonah. In the morning, when it started to get warm, all of a sudden, boop, there was this wonderful shade bush that grew up right over Jonah. And he thought, well, at least if I got a ringside seat here, I got some shade so I can watch the action. Nice. And he watched the city of Nineveh, and still nothing happened. Nobody got destroyed. And then, all of a sudden, in the heat of the day, the bush went and died. And Jonah went, hey, what happened to my bush? 
I was counting on my bush for a little shade here. Come on, God. I mean, look, look at this poor, innocent bush. And God said, isn't that interesting that you're so concerned about that bush and it doesn't occur to you to be concerned about that whole city full of all those people who are so innocent they don't even know their right hand from their left and also a lot of cattle. And believe it or not, that is the end of the story. Whether Jonah got the picture, I don't know. Whether Jonah went home again, I don't know. But I wonder if maybe Jonah is still out there on that hillside, wondering. Maybe God doesn't really want to destroy people, just wants them to listen. And maybe Jonah is ready to listen, and maybe not. I don't know. But it's still the end. <laughs>